Hey, fellow traveler, welcome to the Third Eye Awakening podcast, a show where we talk all about spiritual and psychic awakening, magic, the shift from 3D to 5D, star seeds, ascension, multiple timelines, multiple dimensions, the universe, the multiverse, the Akashic records, all the good things. I am your host, Amy Blair, and I'm so glad to have you here with me today. Okay, let's do this. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to have Chelsea here with us today to talk about her experience with spiritual and psychic awakening and her version of spirituality and just hear she's somebody who has like a bazillion interesting thoughts. I love having conversations with her. So I'm just excited to hear where this conversation goes. So hi, Chelsea. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I'm so excited. <laughs> so would you start out by sharing, well, I guess the very first question I'll ask you, which I did not warn you about, but I'm going to ask you first, what spiritual awakening means to you? Like how, yeah, what, how you would define that for yourself? Oh, that's a tricky question. For myself, I feel it's that call to something deeper that is so persistent. You can't even deny it anymore. So that's, that's what it feels like. I think in my life. I'm not sure how it would present for other people, but the, yeah, for me, it was just this deep calling. Mm -hmm. And when you say something deeper, what do you mean by that something? That there's something more than what we see in like this physical material world, like that there is God and that there is an aspect of seeking that we need to like seek to expand on that relationship. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I like to ask, sometimes I remember and sometimes I don't, but I like to ask because I think everybody has a unique perspective on what it is and I don't want to assume that everybody's take on spiritual awakening is the same as mine. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. And what is your magic power or your magic powers if you have more than one? My magic powers, they're like very complicated and probably there's a lot of them. Yeah. I feel like I'm, <laughs> I feel like I can, I can, um, I can sense energy and I can sense people's potential pretty easily. And I know when someone's like a safe person versus a not safe person, hmm. lightning fast, I can do a little bit of like energy work and healing, but I also feel like I agitate people in a way that aggravates their shadow. Um, <laughs> So that's fine. Like, I feel like I've gotten into conflict with a lot of people and I don't even know how it's happened. It just feels like I'm aggravating people somehow. Which is so funny because you're so nice. <laughs> that's what I feel. I don't even know how to jump into these situations. <laughs> that's a great magic power to have though because those things need to get poked sometimes so that you know they're there. Yes, I, I do. I'm a little bit of a poker. And in my youth, I've been, I've been less tactful sometimes mm -hmm. in how I've spoken. So I think like I would go up to somebody and be like, you're struggling right now. Like what's going on with you? And just be really quite direct, confrontational. <laughs> People are like, what? You're not allowed to see this. Like, oh, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great, those are great magic powers. So will you tell us all about like who you are and where you are and what you do and you know just all about you and how, and in a way that pertains to this kind of conversation around spiritual and psychic awakening yeah right now in my in my life I am a mom of, of two girls so I'm a stay-at-home mom right now which I feel like has actually been a catalyst for a lot of awakening for me and it has been challenging every single day and pushing me to wake up and to really understand myself on a deeper way. I'm also a doula, but I'm a fresh doula. I haven't been doing it for very long before we entered this period of lockdown. So I have one birth under my belt, but many, many, hopefully in my future. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there will be lots and lots and lots. And so will you tell us about your unfolding process of spiritual and psychic awakening and what it's been like for you, what it's felt like, if it was kind of like gentle and gradual, or if it was like abrupt and kind of traumatic or a mix of both or neither. <laughs> yeah. 
Mine, I feel like mine was a big uh, mix of both. I grew up Christian and I remember my mom doing a prayer with me when I was about four years old, asking Jesus into my heart. And I felt something happen at that moment where I felt I was a different person. And so ever since then, I felt this presence of God constantly in my life. And I've gone through a lot of things. Like my, my parents were struggling in their relationship and my mom was abusive towards me. And there was a lot of problems going on in my life. And I always felt like God was protecting me and I had that strength. So even though all of this was going on, that sense and that spark that awakened, I remember at that moment when I asked Jesus into my heart, it was persistent. So then after my parents got divorced and they basically stopped being Christians completely and didn't take me to church or anything, I became very fanatic about it almost and was trying to evangelize to everybody all the time <laughs> in my youth. People would come up to me constantly asking me about my perspective on spirituality, which was essentially made up in my head because I had no like church background at the time. I just made it up. Like I read the Bible and I was like, well, this is my perspective on it. And then I watched Oprah, like completely, <laughs> completely made up. So I mean, that was like really slow. Like they, that felt like a slow process, but almost like in the wounding, I felt an awareness that there was something deeper because I remember my parents fighting and me thinking, wow, like these people are so immature. Like I'm, I'm never going to be like that. And they have no idea what life is about. And so I just like breezed past that. And then I think the, one of the big things that happened to me was when I was 16, I was assigned a book report on Edgar Casey of all people. Wow. Yeah. Like how did that land? Like sure. there was like there was a pile of like 40 books on the table and we got to pick one and I just went up to one and I grabbed whatever one and it was like mind blowing to me. That's incredible. I know. Just so bizarre that that happened. Yeah. So then, I mean, this is like a long I suppose this is a really, really long story, and I feel like I'm going to go back and forth. That's but, all right. Yeah. But I've always been, my, my friends have always kind of said that I was psychic, and we always joked that I was psychic, because as I was a teenager, I would just say things to them that, like, came true and, like, happened. So I'm not sure, like, where that was even coming from. It would just pop into my head, and I would know, or I would know what somebody was going to say before they said it. So that kind of thing happened to me all the time. And I would have like prophetic dreams that would like word for word come true. And I just accepted that. I was like, oh, for sure. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm just psychic. No big deal. I didn't think anything of it. And it was only, I just kind of like pushed that aside. And I, I mean, as I grew, I like got Reiki trained and I like fell in love with the chakra system. And Carolyn Mace was a big influence for me. But it wasn't really until like the summer of 2019, like this past year, that I felt like my spiritual awakening ramped up big time. Like I was just, you know, into like energy healing, always had my faith in God. But then this past summer, I got this like urgent need to heal myself. Hmm. In way. So I was like, okay, like I started meditating every single day and reading like a whole bunch of books and it was just massive like that just felt like that was a game changer and I think preparation for what we're going through right now for sure for sure that's what I'm getting is like your yourself just knew that like big things were coming and you had to like clear out some of your own wounds in order to be able to like hold this energy and hold your frequency through it oh yeah mm -hmm. and so what triggered that do you remember? So that was last summer in 2019, you said? Yeah. So when I, um, I think it was the year before in 2018, 2018. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know years. Anyways, on my 29th birthday, I suddenly had this feeling like I needed to heal before the age of 30. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, I'm going to start going to counseling. I did EMDR therapy, which was very helpful um, to deal with like my past trauma and my childhood. And 
and I started seeing an energy healer very regularly. So like I had my counselor, my energy healer, and then I started doing breathwork classes, like all like within that span of time. I'm 31 now. Um, last summer, my friend just messaged me or not message me. She, she was visiting me and she mentioned Ascension. And I had literally never heard that term before. I don't even know why. I, she said, oh, there's like this Ascension thing and like galactic history. And I was like, what? Like, just never, like, what are you talking about? This doesn't make any sense. And then um, I just started researching it. And it was like really confronting, actually, because it was like world paradigm shifting. Yeah. But I'm so happy that I found out that information like a year prior to today because like, I don't even know where I would be with all the stuff going around the internet right now. Yeah. Right. Like it, it's given you sort of like a paradigm that allows you to sort of filter through the information on the internet and like figure out like how to make sense of it for yourself. Yes, exactly. And like have more of a symbolic sight and a symbolic vision for what's happening. Mm -hmm. So what is your, what's your symbol? I mean, I kind of know because we've talked about it before, but I would just love to hear your own words. Mm -hmm. I think we're all like awakening. I think that's what's happening. I really feel like we're all just being like raised up and woken up to what is actually going on. And that involves so many really dark things, but also so many light things. A lot of my friends who I feel like haven't been really on the spiritual train are suddenly on the spiritual train and really just investing in that. So I feel like we're all just really being called right now to level up. Yeah. I, I really resonate with that so much. I, I just feel like it's funny because like, I don't know, two months before the COVID stuff, or maybe not, maybe it was even one month. I remember recording a podcast episode and it was about like awakening like wildflowers and just like, you know, sometimes we can feel this urgency to want to wake everybody else up because things will be better when we're all more awake, but that everybody's on their journey and their trajectory. And it's like a field of wildflowers and whatever. And suddenly everybody's in bloom. And then, and then like a month later, we're just like launched into it where I'm like, holy crap, that's exactly what's happening. Everybody's waking up to some degree or another. And even myself, like, I feel like even though I've been actively going through a spiritual awakening for, I don't know, like 20 years or something, I feel like I've, I'm going through this whole new level right now where I'm sort of reconciling like a more detailed understanding of the darkness that I did not know before. And, but also then seeing like the way that fits in with the light and, and Mm -hmm. everything. It's just, yeah, it's very, very intense. I definitely feel like so many people are waking up. Yeah. It's that, it's the darkness bit that I think is really hard Mm -hmm. to like work on. I feel like I've, I've really loved my entire life burying my head in the sand that's just been really fun. Like I've been able to avoid being in pain and, you know, um, facing any sort of, I I went through a very long time in my Christian faith, not even believing in evil. Like Mm. I was like, no way, like no way the devil exists. I don't care what the Bible says. I don't care about anything. I don't think sin exists. I don't think evil exists. I went through this huge thing. And then, well, I just feel like full circle now you know, believing in aliens and the occult and all this stuff. I'm like, well, there's evil now. I really understand that. I didn't understand that before. Yeah. I, I had the same thing too, like where I rejected the idea of Satan so much and I saw it as manipulation and it made me angry and I, and you know, the idea of sin and stuff. And it's not that I didn't think there was like a differentiation between right and wrong or good and bad, but it was more, it wasn't what we thought it was. Um, and yeah, I, I also was just, and yet I had a sense that the darkness was there, but I had no idea how real it is, how real. And it's been so, I don't know, like, I guess shocking sometimes, like I learned something new and then I like, like, Oh my gosh, that's so intense to hold in my field. And then I like integrate it and then I'm ready to receive something new again but also interestingly along with my sort of like acceptance that I still I don't know what Satan is I don't know if Satan's an actual entity 
on its own or a consciousness of its own separate from, you know, human beings and other interdimensional beings believing in it. But I know that it's real insofar as people put a lot of energy into it. And so that is its own force. So along with my sort of acceptance of Satan being real to some extent or another, I had this whole like deepening relationship with like the Christ codes and my Christ itself and Christ consciousness that already was starting to grow like three years ago, but now it's like, oh my God, like it's real. I get it on a level that I did not get it before. It's so intense. (laughs) It is so intense. And I remember, you know, reading the Bible even as a young child and being like, what is going on? Like, how on earth is this real life? Like, it just doesn't make sense in real life. But I think it's, it's, you think of it so materialistic. And now knowing this information, going back and rereading things, it's like, oh, this is mystical. Like, this is mystical information that we're being given to like, you know, like codes, like you said. Mm -hmm. Codes for us. Yeah. And so do you find, like, I I find it so interesting. I didn't know that about you, that after your parents divorced, they stopped being Christian. And so they didn't take you to church anymore. But you were like, no, I've accepted Jesus into my heart. And that's the thing that, like, that's the light that's inside of me that keeps me protected. And so I'm just going to, like, read the Bible and power through. And and then, um, so now you're Christian and you go to church when you're able, when churches are open for congregation and worship. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I didn't go for a really long time. I just kind of, um, like worshiped on my own. I didn't really start going to church until I was done university around 2013. And like my, my friends who just think I'm like the kookiest person ever were like, you need to come to church. Like, this will be fun. And I was like, okay, great. Cause they, they, at the church I go to, they have discussion tables after service, which I love. Like I could never go to a church where you can't talk about what you just learned afterwards and like debate people. I just love that. So, um, I went and I've been going like every single day, well, Sunday, every Sunday, sorry. Mm-hmm. Ever since, including now, like we have online church and I don't miss. I don't miss a Sunday. Like I really find it valuable and really grounding for my faith because when I learn about all this ascension stuff, I can get very far off in the clouds and it gives me anxiety. So I find like church is such a nice pairing of like grounding, like this is like kingdom work we're doing and like grounding my faith there in the earth where we're supposed to be right now. Yeah. Like, like ground level. I I always see it as like the ground level troops. We're the ground, we're the ground troops and we're building the things down here. Oh, that's really cool. I never thought about it that way. That's really, really neat. So, okay. I'm just going to tell you, I think, I don't know how you see yourself and you can feel free to reject this if you (laughs) want, but I see you as a star seed with very, very cosmic energy behind you, very high dimensional energy behind you. And I also see you as being specifically like some people come in with the Christ code frequency. One of the people that I'm working with in my one-to-one coaching also has that like really powerfully. And it's, I think it's so interesting that as a a little child, like when your mom was reading that prayer with you, like you instantly felt that activation because it's I it feels like it's already in you and you're here to sort of like translate it for people and like ground it into humanity, if that makes sense. Yeah. What do you think? Does that feel like it resonates in any way? Yes, actually that resonates so much because I feel like Jesus has been absolutely everything to me. And I, I've really fought that because I sound like a cheesy Christian. And so I don't quite fit in anywhere because, you know, I'm very new age, but I'm also very Christian because like Jesus is everything to me. And I don't know why. And it just happened. And I've always been really led by compassion. And I like, I feel like my heart breaks for people constantly. And I don't experience a lot of judgment for people. I'll give you an example. I've, I've had so many arguments in my life over um, pedophilia in the sense that I know that it's an evil, but at the same time, I have compassion that people are so broken. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's where it is twofold because I feel such an intense compassion in all angles. 
Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's, that's what Jesus gifted me. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely, because when I think about Christ consciousness, I feel like what, what it does is it is, it's the path to release us from the illusion of duality and duality is real, but it's also an illusion. And, um, like we're going to be experiencing duality until we're ready to see the illusion and dissolve it back into unity. And that is like one of the um, gifts of the Christ frequency that Jesus, you know, brought to the people is and and continues to bring to the people is the ability to see everybody as or all souls as precious i guess and even even when people are broken and again it's so hard like it's so hard when you get into things like pedophilia and ritual child abuse and things like that because it's it's so awful every part of you wants to reject it Mm -hmm. it's the difference between rejecting that the action versus rejecting the soul that is engaged in that action. And it's such a tricky fine, fine line for a lot of people to try and navigate, but it sounds like you, you're able to. Yeah. And I really feel like there is an aspect of redemption that's available to everybody and reconciliation. And I just, um, I pray for those people. Like if somebody wrongs me, I will pray for them. Like, I love to pray. I don't know if it's like an emotional release for me, just like, I don't know, to deflect my own anger. But like, if I see somebody angry towards me, I'll automatically start praying for them. And I'm like, oh, I hope that they have peace. Because like, that is what I want. You know, I don't want them to pay just because they've wronged me somehow. I want them to have peace. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. I think, I don't think it's an emotional deflection, but I can't really say cause I'm not you, but I think, <laughs> I think when we have, like, it's normal to have anger and have a, a reaction, but then like, rather than acting out of that to be able to like return to the place where you're like, Oh, but you're my brother, you're my sister. And I want us all to feel whole, I guess, yeah. or whatever, like that's, that's really the outcome. And I think that's really beautiful too, because there's so many, I feel like every day, all the time, there are so many opportunities to get pulled down into like separation consciousness or like, you know, like, um, you know, things on the internet, things that people say, like sometimes my partner will, (laughs) he'll comment on some thread or something where I'm like, Oh honey, why? But (laughs) I know when he's doing it, cause he's typing and gets this look on his face and, and it's just interesting because there's a million tripping points where we can be brought back down into that, you know, space where we see somebody else as outside of us, separate from us, stupid, an idiot, you're the problem, whatever label we want to put on people. And it's on one hand, it feels like easy to go down that road. But on the other hand, I personally feel like it's actually easier to like lift up out of it and be like, I love you. (laughs) I don't necessarily agree with your viewpoint, but I love you. (laughs) Exactly. And we all have something to learn from each other. I think anytime I've gone ego tripping in my own brain, I've really started getting some sort of superiority. Like what my ideas are somehow infallible. I don't even know how you could possibly think that way. Yeah, (laughs) I know, but it's such a human thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely find myself there and laugh at it. For sure. Yeah. No, you have to laugh because it's so silly and so human and we all go through it. But like at the same time, the gift is when you're like feeling that is to like realize that other people's opinions are valuable and have something to teach you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think, I mean, my perception of what I've been shown is that that's so much of the whole, I mean, there's like, infinite reasons why we come to earth and why we like fragment into these like individual aspects of you know the the all oneness um consciousness but so much of it is because then we all have a different perspective and we can like interact with each other's perspectives and transform ourselves based on those interactions with each other's perspectives and the idea that we're like constantly searching like unanimous consent or uh Um, consensus and agreement on any topic is like so it just seems I don't know 
kind of like chasing, uh, I want to say a unicorn, but I think unicorns are real. So I don't know. It's like, I don't know, but it's just, it's like, but we'll never, we're all, we're all, we all have a whole unique set of like framework and perspective and context and everything that can't be denied and can't be glossed over. We're all so unique and we're learning from each other. Uh, or that's the opportunity anyway. So I would love to hear more. I'd love to go more down the line of um, talking about the darkness and reconciling with the darkness because I feel like it's such an important topic and I am so hesitant always to talk about it because it's so upsetting to hear about it and I don't want to be I like for some reason I feel like I'm I shouldn't be scaring people or I shouldn't be I don't know I, I really restrict myself talking about it but I also feel like holy crap we have to though we have to so what is your sort of yeah if you have any thoughts to share on the darkness like what your perspective is or like how you sort of deal with like transmuting all the things that come up and as we learn about the the intense darkness that exists on earth yeah um for me i feel like i'm i use patience a lot when stuff comes to me or um thoughts and ideas come to me about this because I don't want to jump the gun and go down a road that isn't healthy. So a lot of times I'll sit and pray and wait for a sign, which sounds so silly, but that's why I honestly do that constantly. I, I always wait for signs. So like with the sex trafficking thing going on, like we spoke several months ago, like I had that experience hearing a song and then hearing it again and it having that meaning to me um, to go down that road and research. I like waited for two weeks to go down that road again after hearing the song the first time and knowing that I needed to research about sex trafficking. And like I waited two weeks and then I did it again because, and I heard the song again and needed to, to do it because I don't want to waste my time and lower my vibration when I don't know if it's true. And I want it to absolutely be from God directing me to learn about it because I know everybody has a place and things that they can handle. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily know what my place is. Sometimes maybe I'm not supposed to know things. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of my opinion. So I, I'm like, is this for me? Is this for somebody else? And I kind of wait. Yeah. No, I love that. That's so, it's really simple, but it's, it's really powerful. And I'm going to start doing that as well. Because I find I've gotten a lot better about it. A lot better. But at the beginning of the summer, like May and June, I think, as I was kind of like really going down the rabbit hole, because I feel like I had to relearn what, what is actually happening in the world. Basically, I just was like, oh, every, or so much of what I thought was going on is, is deliberately like an illusion that is created to fool us. And that I have to now learn what's actually going on with like politics and celebrities and the whole general overall agenda of like sort of brain brainwashing us into like a belief system that serves people with dark intentions rather than serves the whole of humanity and the earth and everybody. And while I was kind of learning about it, like when I was at the part where I was learning about the celebrity MK ultra, like craziness and learning about the sex trafficking, I could feel myself getting like sucked back into it. And it wasn't like none of the content creators I could feel like on YouTube or, or podcasts were deliberately trying to enthrall people, but I could feel the dark energy that was like, like just just the nature of that dark energy is meant to like snag you into falling down this rabbit hole and like chasing this tunnel that you know like either doesn't ever end or ends in a bunch of what are they called dead ends or if you follow it all the way to the core it's like a very dark place it's hard to come back from and I could just feel it was almost like a glamour, like there was a spell on all of it to to sort of pull our attention in. Like if it ever came to the surface, it was meant to like enthrall us and um, be so horrible and fascinating and horrible that that we just lose ourselves in it. And uh, I could kind of feel that happening. And so I'd have to take big breaks from it 
and I suppose I wasn't really doing it deliberately like you, like I wasn't praying and waiting for a sign, but I, I do remember a point where I stepped back and I was like, okay, I'm only going to learn. I set the intention for myself. I'm only going to learn as much as I have to, like I, I am supposed to know in order to be as effective as I need to be in the world. But, and I think that, I think that was a good thing to do, but I love that approach of, praying and waiting for a sign and being like, if, if I'm meant to go into the darkness, it's going to be God who is leading me into the darkness. It's going to be like for the purpose of bringing it up into the light and like where it can be healed and reintegrated into the whole and all that. Um, yeah. So it's really beautiful. I definitely feel like it's meant, like we're meant to only see the darkness in so much as we can heal it. Mm -hmm. I think there's so much darkness. Like we literally cannot even hold it in our bodies. <laughs> Yeah. Like it's just so much so like if I can take a little piece and the interesting thing about sex trafficking for me is I feel like my whole life, this is another one of my gifts. I can spot people who've been sexually abused. I feel it in my body. I have on multiple occasions just been speaking to a friend and been like, have you been sexually abused? Like rude question, but that's just <laughs> what comes out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I've never told anybody this before, but like, oh my gosh, I've been thinking that, but never spoken it. Like, I just have this sense about something. So I feel like for me, like learning about that specific piece of the darkness, I feel like it's alongside with some of my gifts and how I'm like able to um, heal. I don't even know where the potential in that is going to go. I think I have a long road in figuring that out, but I think there's something there for me specifically and like learning about that. Mm hmm. That's, that's so interesting. That kind of makes me think of for myself, like when I, when I learned about like all of the, the children that are in underground bunkers, um, and that are being brought up to the surface and that they have like, like big arenas full of like, not everywhere, not in every city. And I don't even know how many cities, but I did. I remember seeing a shot and it was a, somebody in the FBI, I think. And he showed this like arena or community center full of pack and plays that were ready to receive children that were being rescued. And I remember my heart was like, that's why you're here for the children and the babies. And you're here for the mothers. And, and because like, there is a huge wound that you didn't even know about. And I don't even know what my role would be because I have my own family and I just live in little old, you know, small town Ontario. But yeah, it's that, that feeling like, oh, I, I, have, I have a gift and like there's some um, parallel here that I'm supposed to, on whatever level, I'm supposed to be part of the healing of this. Yeah. And I feel that too. Uh, like, um, it, I've been praying and like, I never used to pray for people. That was just not something I ever did until like a couple years ago. I suddenly was like, I'm going to try this. Um, even though I think it's stupid, I didn't think God could intervene, but I feel so much energy and like the powerfulness of God feels like it radiates out of me when I pray. And like, I've started praying for the children in the situations that you're speaking about. And it just, I've never felt that much energy coming out of my body mm -hmm. than when I'm praying about that. So I don't know, it may be even prayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I, absolutely. Like it doesn't even have to be like a physical, like physical proximity thing too, but it's just like being here and holding the, holding the truth or the truth that we're shown and like holding this frequency of healing and love and um, like redemption and salvation and all, all the beautiful feelings that like bring us back to our wholeness as much as possible. I think that kind of stuff can never, ever, ever be overestimated in this power. Never, ever. Like we don't even, we can't even begin to understand how powerful it is. Yeah, I know. And I don't, I don't even, I'm not even touching the surface on like how much power that holds. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And so, so now, okay, so you didn't go to church for a long, long time. And now you go to church and you love it and you love the discussion parts afterwards. And I would love to hear since you kind of like made up your own interpretation of Jesus in the Bible when, when you were little, I would love to hear how, like, now that you've been going to church for a while, how those things, like where they meet in your mind, like how much are your beliefs in sync with the beliefs that you learn at church and how do you reconcile it when they don't really match up? 
I just kind of, I just kind of sit with it because there's a, a couple things about church that really bothers me that I can't quite figure out like how to reconcile. A, a couple of things like singing about blood. I just hate that. <laughs> I just like absolutely hate that so much. But I think that there's something there that's deeper and older and something I don't understand. So when I come across something like that, where I can't quite reconcile what I feel with what's happening, I try to just sit with it. And um, I think that there's been a lot of spiritual growth for thousands of years. Like, I don't know. I just don't know. I'm not the be all end all of spirituality. Right. So, like, there's going to be something there, even if I don't really like it. Like a wisdom. Right. I love, I love that approach of just sort of like, if something like kind of rubs you weird, like just sitting with it and letting it sort of clarify itself. And then if it doesn't clarify itself, just accepting that there's possibly an aspect to it that you just don't understand. And that's okay. Yeah. Cause I like, there's so many times in my life where I've come full circle and started enjoying things that I used to hate like singing in church, I used to hate that. And now I love it. And I'm sobbing the entire time being like, this is powerful. Like, I just love it so much. And it's, I don't know, it's just new for me. Yeah. That's awesome. And so it just occurred to me that before I have to let you go, I would really love to hear you talk a little bit about Ender's Game and then the other book that came with it. Because I remember one time when we were talking, you were like, that book was so activating for me. Yeah. Okay. That is like my all-time favorite book is probably Speaker for the Dead by Orson Scott Card, which is the, the first book. And then Ender's Game is the prequel. And I usually read Ender's Game first and then Speaker for the Dead because it just makes sense that way but you don't have to um and ender's game is about like this little boy who is being trained from the army he's got like a chip in the back of his head and he's being trained to basically murder this race of aliens that the humans discovered and so on his journey of like like being put into this position being completely isolated from everybody else he has this intense compassion for people and he notices that other people don't have that same experience. And so he also ends up having compassion for this alien race as well. And it's a horrible, like disturbing book. Like you, you can't really think about like, this is a real child because you'd just be like, heartbroken. Reading it as a parent is very different than reading it, you know, <laughs> before I had kids. But it's just, it breaks me open because I feel that so strongly that no matter like who we're experiencing in the world, like to have compassion and like this deep, deep understanding, um, even if they're our enemy or supposed enemy, because that's what it ended up being, which is like, this is a supposed enemy. Mm -hmm. It's not been a real enemy. And then Speaker for the Dead is like the follow-up. It's like the same main character as an older gentleman and he is he becomes a speaker for the dead in the sense that he will travel around all the galaxies on his spaceship and he will speak at funerals the truth of the person's life and so he won't just be soft and say oh somebody was this you know beautiful man and then they passed away he'll like cut to it and be like they were flawed and he will like speak the story of their life Wow, that's really cool and intense. And so does he, is he like, but he does it in a way that still honors them as a soul and honors their incarnation? Yes, exactly. And then also um, the story in the second book is they meet the second alien race that humans have ever discovered. And it's the journey of like interacting with them as well. And like, how do the, how do the human beings not make the same mistakes they made the first time? Right. Cool. And that was super activating for you. Yes, it just broke my heart open. And I don't know, I was I was only 11 years old, like really little. And it just happened to be a year I felt so much powerful spiritual energy in my life. My parents were a mess. And so I was really in my own world. <laughs> like I read Harry Potter, I read Ender's Game, Speaker for the Dead. I read a lot of really powerful books that were just massive. My parents would always yell at me for reading too much. They'd be like, you have to stop now. That's so like, funny. I would never stop. I would be up to like three in the morning, just like reading and consuming books constantly. And I did read a study actually that said people who read 
science fiction and fantasy are more compassionate human beings. Hmm. And I feel like that's so true because it really helps you with this imagination. Yeah. And like, how do you imagine a world? Like this is imagination. Like imagine what world you want to live in. Okay. Like I can. Right. Yeah. That's, that's really cool to think about. Yeah. And like plus Harry Potter, of course, is very activating as well. I'm sure you agree with that. Of course. I actually <laughs> had so much resistance to reading Harry Potter because the first movie came out on the weekend of my birthday. So my family took me to see this movie for my birthday. Like that was the thing we all did together. And I really liked the movie. But then when I saw the Chamber of Secrets, I don't know, you know how the movies are never as good as the books. And I was just like, oh God, I can see how this is going to go. It's always going to be Voldemort. It's going to be Harry against Voldemort and blah, blah, blah. And it just seemed like such a, even though now I love the Chamber of Secrets, like the movie too, it, at the time, I remember just being cynical and kind of arrogant about it. And then my sister was so into it and she essentially like forced me to listen to her read a chapter out loud because I wouldn't read it and I wouldn't get like on board with it. And everybody's reading Harry Potter, so I'm going to be different and I'm not going to read it. And then she read the chapter and I was like, give me that book. <laughs> and I just like poured through them all and my mind was blown. I think she was tapping into another actual like parallel reality or something because I think like the really amazing authors do that because it's so detailed like how could you there's nothing flat and two-dimensional about it it's so rich and real it's just like mind-blowing oh yeah and I think that's so funny that you're like resistant to the Voldemort Harry Potter versus because isn't that the way it is in real life it's like we always come whenever I'm struggling in my life I'm like oh this again here yeah. we go yeah. Like same old, same old, you know, battle I'm fighting. Yeah. Same old, like, archetypal battle between good and evil. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> not creative at all. <laughs> so boring. Why am I here again? So predictable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the last thing I'd love to ask you about is how how you engage with your daughters in terms of, like, fostering their spirituality and as somebody who, you know, is – I'm sure you're going through your own constantly unfolding spiritual awakening. I'll just pause and say, Chelsea's daughters are so adorable. And I remember <laughs> like one day, a few weeks ago, I woke up and checked my Instagram. And there's just this picture of her holding her coffee beside the bathtub in her pajamas. And then you scroll through to the next picture and it's her daughter with marker all over her face. And, 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 Chelsea's caption was just like, I'm having my coffee by the bath this morning because my daughter needed to artistically express herself and her feelings <laughs> all over her face with marker. <laughs> Motherhood. <laughs> yes, that was so funny. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so how do you engage with them in, in their little spiritual unfolding alongside your spiritual unfolding? I feel like I'm, I've really taught, well, Ren, my oldest, she's, she's five, so she can grasp a lot of the concepts, but I really tried to foster prayer and like to tell her that she can have her own relationship with God. It doesn't have to do with anybody else. It can just be her own relationship and any problem that she has, she can take it straight to source, you right. know, yeah. like, you know, you have your own wisdom. And I always tell her she has her own wisdom. And no matter what happens, it's like her heart is telling her what to do. And so like, it's a matter of whether she listens to that or not. I don't know. It's, she says some really interesting things. She's really frustrated right now. My older one, she's really frustrated that she can't hear God physically. Mm. She's always telling me, I, why can't I hear God's voice? You know? And it's like, oh man, like me too. Like same, like some, <laughs> that is a frustrating thing that we can't like word for word hear messages like that. I mean, I guess sometimes, like I have experienced that sometimes, but it's very rare that it would be like a word for word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Same for me too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm just open. I'm really open and I love asking questions. Um, I asked my youngest, she's two, her name's Avila. I asked her like, why did you come here? And she said, I came for Ren. And I was like, yes, you did. Like I can tell they have this cosmic bond like it's just out of this world 
Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. She, came, she knows, she remembers. I came for Ren. <laughs> oh, and I was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you ask Ren, is she too old now to be able to answer that? Yeah, she's, she's always been a lot less verbal than mm-hmm. my youngest. Like they both speak this in the same way, but just Ren's internal dialogue I think is really she's she keeps it all to herself and she gets really embarrassed easily Mm. so she's not really one to just chatter away about her thoughts and feelings so it's really hard to get information out of her I'm sure she's experiencing it but it is hard to get information my youngest is a chatterbox like so I'm sure as she gets older she will just completely tell me everything she's experiencing (laughs) yeah Yes, that's fair. That's fair. Like, we don't always have to, we don't always get to be privy to the internal processes of our children, but for sure, like, just knowing that she's definitely having them and just uh, processing them quietly on her own. Yeah, and she does say things once in a while. So, you know, ask questions about God or death. I don't know. She's deep. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, being a mom is such a huge, well, I don't want to make generalizations about it. In my experience, being a mom is such a, an incredibly like intensely activating experience of just like witnessing the unfolding of another person from the very start and like not just witnessing, but like experiencing it within your own like energy field and just, yeah, their whole like kind of containing and, and beholding their beautiful unfolding through time is such a on that on its own is such an activating experience oh yeah I feel that too and like how each of them came into this world so differently and just like completely themselves like whole beings Mm -hmm. I find completely beautiful yeah they are whole beings absolutely like they're like it's just like the the acorn is not different from the oak like the entire oak is in the acorn and that I feel like that's what it is with new humans who are born that they're just like they're totally whole and complete we don't have to teach them very much there's a few things that we can teach them but mostly it's just like keeping them safe and whatever while they unfold yeah and just allowing them to be themselves and yeah you know give them the snuggles they need yeah yeah that's right Oh, what a beautiful note to end on, giving them the snuggles they need and allowing them to be themselves. Maybe someday we will live in a world where all the humans get that. But until that time, I suppose we can just love and pray for everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that is the world I want. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I actually could talk to you forever and I have like, I already have like a dozen other questions in my head. So I'm sure that we will have more conversations and some of them we may choose to share on the podcast. We will see, but thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your spiritual and psychic awakening story. I feel like it was such a unique and fascinating conversation full, full of goodness. So thank you so much, Chelsea. Oh, thank you, Amy. I'm so excited. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And so everybody, thank you for giving us your time and your ears and your energy. And if you liked this episode and you can think of somebody else who might resonate with it, please don't hesitate to share. And if you really like this episode, please consider taking a screenshot of yourself listening to this episode and then post it to social media and tag Chelsea and I, and then that way we'll know that you're listening and it will bring us so much happiness and joy. So if you feel compelled to do that, we will appreciate it from the bottoms of our hearts and souls. Okay, everyone have a beautiful, beautiful day or night, wherever you are. Thank you so much for being here with me on this episode. I appreciate you more than my words could ever say. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe, and share, and I will catch you on the next episode.